Hi. Happy Mother's Day to you, by the way, honey. And uh, he's a beautiful mom and grandma. Just uh, share with me for a few things, and then I'm going to wrap up with some things. Um, but uh, by the way, give our, our Facebook audience and our YouTube audience a round of applause. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you haven't heard, we're having a baptism on J June the 4th at my house. And if you've not been baptized in water or you'd like to be rebaptized, you as your kids, please sign up on the church app. We'd be happy to do that as well. Well, you know, um, I think one of the most uh, frustrating things as a mom is, uh, especially if you're uh, a working mom, is to say, well, if somebody says, oh, you're just a mom. Are you kidding me? Right. Just a mom? I've got the most important job in the whole world. Now, right. not to take away from what dads bring to the table, but, I mean, we, we conceive those children. We, we feel them grow in us, yeah. and then they're born to us, and you're like, how in the world could I ever love something so much? Right. Do you, you remember that feeling? I remember um, when we, I was laying in the hospital, and, and our firstborn, Chad, he was laying in my arms, and the thought came to me, um, you can take away my house, you can take my car, you can take my, any possessions that you have, but you can never take away the fact that I gave birth to this yeah, child. Beautiful. And it's such an over, isn't right, isn't it such an overwhelming right. thing, Mom, Amen. to be a mom? Yes, and so we celebrate you today. We love you. We appreciate you. And just know this, that heaven sees what you're doing. God sees you. He knows you. He loves you. And he cares about you. And sometimes God feels far away. Your children feel far away. Your husband, whatever the case of life is. Right. But God sees you. He knows where you are. He knows your address and your phone number. Mm -hmm. And he's got you on his mind. That's beautiful. Well, and you moms, uh, thank God for moms. Um, but, you know, they, they play a different role, honey, uh, as you said, than us dads. And, and uh, But I, I noticed that somebody says, well, you know, the husband's the head of the home. Well, yes, but if that's so, then the... Women are the heart of yes. the home, ladies. Yes. You're the heart of the right. home. Because without, and I notice single guys that are, that are not married, there's no woman in the house. You go in their places all dull and sterile. You know, they got, they got, <laughs> nothing matches. It doesn't match, it doesn't and they matter. don't care. Yeah, you they don't a, care. You bring them, the woman comes into his life, and now everything starts to flow beautifully. But, uh, but th you guys got heart. And, yes, we do. And one thing about moms I notice is, is they, moms and grandmas, they solve emotional problems. Yep, we do. Amen, right? I Amen. mean, you know, they, they, God's given it that heart. Well, I mean, I, you know. The, the, the kids will come to dad or to grandpa, and they'll be, uh, and they'll say, just buck up. You're fine. Right. You're fine. But moms, what do we do? We're like, oh, come here. Let's hug it out. Right. Come here. Let, let's, I'll take care of that. Um, just and I'm other. like, just make the right decision, all right? And especially the girls. Wow. I'm like, why are you crying? What? <laughs> is, is, I You're don't, crying over that? I'm gonna tell on I'm gonna tell on Gracie. I don't think I see her. No, she's not here. Okay, so I'm gonna tell on her. Okay. <laughs> so we had been in Michigan all week at a pastor's retreat, and we got home late uh, Friday night and Saturday morning. We wake up, and <laughs> I don't know why, but the first thing he did was he went and pulled. You never do this. It's so odd. He pulled the lint filter out of the dryer. And he goes, why is this thing full of lint? Why doesn't anybody clean this out? And Gracie comes out of her room, and she's just standing there. <laughs> and he went on about what he was doing, and she turned around, walked back in her bedroom. And she sat down on the couch, and tears came down her eyes. She started crying. I go, baby, what's wrong? I went, and here's the emotional problem. Yeah, yeah. I go sit down next to her, I and I wrap my arms around her, and I put her head on my shoulder. I go, what's wrong, baby? She said, You've been gone for five days, and all Papa said to me was, why is there lint in the filter? Take care of it, girl. But anyways, no. <laughs> so, so there you have it. She's like, come on. But we hugged it out. I loved her. Well, I loved you. Kissed, kissed on her, of course, and, and it all worked out. But, but yeah, thank God. So, yes, moms. us moms, we solve, solve emotional problems. I have this yeah. quote that I've had in my phone for probably 10 years, and it says, give a woman groceries, and she will cook you a meal. Give a woman a house, and she will make you a home. Yes. Give a woman a seed, and she will give you a child. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that yeah. Is beautiful. So, ladies, we're unique. We're special. I, I just tell you right now, I have no identity crisis. I'm a woman. I'm a mom. I am in Christ. Yes. And I'm proud of it. Amen. Right.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, honey. Let's give God praise. Father, we're so thankful today. Thank you for your precious, holy, written word today. We look to your word. We trust the Holy Spirit to give utterance and unction. May you think through my mind and speak through my mouth, bring revelation through my spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit confirm the word, Father, with manifestations in the people's lives, miracles and breakthroughs, all that they have need of, Father. I declare over every one of you here in the house and those of you watching that you're a good ground, that you hear the word and receive it and bear fruit, some 30, 60, and finally a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Say amen if you receive that. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to I wanna look at Isaiah chapter uh, 54, a few verses uh, to encourage you moms today. Isaiah chapter uh, 54 and verse 5. Do we have that, Roxanne? Isaiah 54 and verse 5. Thank God for the paper Bible, but no, okay, here we have it here. But I, I want to encourage... You mom. By the way, Isaiah chapter 54 comes right after what? 53. And if you know Isaiah 53, you know it's the messianic prophetic word. It's all about the prophecy concerning our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, it talks about that Jesus was a man after sorrow. Jesus, uh, he bore our infirmities. He carried our sicknesses. He was punished for our iniquity. He bore our shame and our guilt by his stripes. We're healed. All that in Isaiah 53. So Isaiah 54 is the windfall. In other words, those that trust in Jesus, the prophetic word is, this is what you get in Isaiah 54. So I'm reading a few verses from Isaiah 54. That's because of Jesus. He fulfilled that prophetic scripture. And now this is what we get. And so he also is interested in talking to you ladies, you moms. Who, who go through heartache and pain and struggle sometimes. And notice, it, notice here it says, for your maker is your husband. It's talking about you ladies. Or maybe you've gone through a painful divorce. Or maybe you've lost your, your husband. You're a widow. Did you know that God will be your husband until the right person comes along? <laughs> ladies? Wow. I mean, how are you going to get a better husband than the father? Right? So God says, hey, for your maker is your husband. In other words, God's saying, I'm going to take care of you moms. Right? And, and I, I'll be a husband to you, says the Lord of hosts. By the way, that word host means angels. In other words, he's a God of multitude of angels, ladies. And so not only does God say, I'm going to take care of you, but I got all my angels at, at your dispatch that are going to move and work on your behalf. And so, ladies... Maybe you're believing God for a husband, or, or maybe you, you, you're a mom, but you don't have a husband for whatever reason. God said he's going to take care of you. You might like it so much, they never mind a man. I'm going to stick with God. But, uh, uh, so please know that. And your Redeemer is, is the God of Israel, the God of all the earth. So that's the fifth verse. Now drop down, drop down to verse number 13, the same Isaiah 54. This is still our windfall. And God says to all you moms, and, and all of us are dads, he says, and your children, how many of you have children? Just, just lift up your hand, right? How many of you have grandchildren? Great-grandchildren. I know Amy and Kay, a few. Wow. Okay, great-grandchildren out there too. Dare I go one more? Let's not go there, all right? But <laughs> all your children, God says, shall be taught, what? By the Lord. What a beautiful promise. And great shall be the peace of your children. Some of you ladies just need to take that right now and just say, I receive that into my spirit that, that, that my children shall be taught of God. See, it looks like they're running amok, some of them, and some of my grandchildren, of course, pay no attention to that. Just make your declarations, all my children shall be taught of the Lord. What a beautiful promise, mamas, moms and dads, grandparents, that you can grab a hold of that and say, yes, and great shall be the peace of of my children. Praise the Lord. So be encouraged with that, Mama. And then in verse 17, same again, the windfall of Jesus. Many of us know no weapon formed against you shall what? Shall prosper. Right? Now, someone says, I got stuff going on. Well, there might be stuff going on, but it shall not prosper. Right? As you trust in the Lord. No weapon. Now, weapons might form, but they shall not prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Praise God. 
right? And this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is our heritage in Christ, right? No weapon. I don't care if it's coming against your kids, your finances, your marriage, your life. Come on, whatever it is, your business, it shall not prosper. Praise God for any evermore. Why? Because of what Jesus has done, the power of the blood. So somebody needs just to receive that and say amen today. So, uh, you know, Cindy and I, the other day, we were, she was just on her phone going through her Instagram and flipping through. So I was kind of leaning over her shoulder, just kind of looking at all kind of stuff. It was incredible. It's like, wow, and it kind of grabs your interest sometimes. It's like three steps to this, three ways out. And, and so I, I was looking at a couple, and one of them was for you ladies, says three, we looked at this, three simple steps for mom to lose wrinkly skin on your legs. And then the grandma, she said, step one, step two, step, I mean, doing all this crazy stuff. That's are crazy, what? Cindy's taking notes, and I'm like, no, no. It's like there's all these three steps to this, and, 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 four, and then we were watching, see, they were watching, there was another one that popped up, say three tips to, to rolling up, how to roll up your jeans, ladies. I mean, that's crazy, off the wall stuff. And Cindy says, I got to remember that. So, I mean, it was working, but, but and, and then one, mom, and one of them said, Mom, wouldn't it be nice if everything was easy as it was getting fat? <laughs> now, I said nothing about that one. I just let that one go by. But I noticed there was all these three steps or three, you know, three keys, three secrets to this, three speaking, but... And, 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 and it, just, it just came to me and said, like, you know what, God, three is a good number for God. It's a big number, three, right? We have the triune God, the Trinity, and so forth. So, so it's a big number. So it just dropped to my spirit. All you ladies on Instagram, you want three steps to something or three keys. And so I want to give you three simple <laughs> steps today. All you mamas. By the way, this will work for anybody, all right? But, but I'm going to address it Three cures from God to moms for anxiety and bitterness in your life. Three cures. Because you'd be surprised how much sometimes we don't even realize that. How many understand our lives, mamas, need to be different than the, than, than the, the mama next door who doesn't even know God? Right? Our lives should not be like that, going through a drama full of anxiety Bitterness because I've been divorced. My wife did this. My husband did that. Mama did this when I was a boy. And all those hurts, and we're not downplaying that. But because of what Jesus has done, you and I can overcome every bitterness or every anxiety in our life because of Jesus and bright, shine brightly. Right? And so I, I want to give you today. So God, just after I saw all the three steps on Instagram, I said, you know, I'm going to give you three cures from God to defeat bitterness or anxiety, and to cast every burden on Jesus. Pastor Mark already gave us an awesome word about casting our cares upon the Lord already. But here's, here's the first one. And I'm not going to be real long today, I don't think. All right? Because I know you guys got plans. Here's the first cure, Mama. Throw the cross at it. I could stay on this one for a long time. Throw the cross at it. I'm talking about every anxiety, every burden, every weight, every care. If you're in Christ today, you have the power to take the cross of Jesus Christ and throw it right out at every challenge and every anxiety in your life. Everything that pops up in the middle of the night that keeps you awake. Every hurt, every pain, every heartache. I've been done this, this wrong, that one. is Life is unfair, but God is more than fair by his grace. I know un unfair things happen. I know we've been hurt as children sometimes. I know we've been abandoned by spouses or we've been betrayed in many ways. But I tell you what, we don't treat it like the rest of the world does and let it harbor in bitterness. No, you throw the cross at it. There's a beautiful story we read in the book of Exodus when the children of Israel, remember they were God just delivered them from Egypt, 400 years of bondage. 
and, and God, God delivered them. We can find this story. I believe it's Exodus uh, chapter 15. God delivered all the children of Israel out of, and split the Red Sea, and they all came out. They were in the wilderness on the way to their promised land, and it had been three days, and, and they, were all, they hadn't had anything to drink, and they were thirsty. They cried out to, to Moses, and Moses cried out to God. And remember what happened? They came upon, upon a, a, a little area of water, and, and it was called Mara. Mara means bitter. And so they saw the water, and they said, wow, finally we get something to drink. But when they taste the water, they realize it was bitter. Poisonous. They realized if they drank that poison, they would bring death to them. And, and so it was bitter. And so they thought, oh, no, what are we going to do? And so Moses, what does he do? He sees a tree. I don't know if he cuts it down or he, or, or he just picks it up, but he picks up a tree by the Spirit of God. And he goes over to this bitter water, and he takes this tree, and he just casts it into the bitter water. And the Bible says as soon as he cast that tree into the bitter waters, what happened? The bitter water became what? Sweet, clean, pure, good tasting. Did you know anytime you see a tree in the Bible or a stick or a piece of wood, it's a type and a shadow of the cross? I said it's a picture of Jesus and the power of the cross. In fact, we know from, from 1 Peter 2.24, I think we have that scripture, 1 Peter 2.24, says he himself bore our sins in his own body, what? On the tree. We having died to sin should live in the righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Jesus hung on a tree and became a curse for us so that every rich blessing would be ours. What he bore, we need not bear. What he took, we need not take. And if Jesus drank the bitter cup and he did, then all of our water in life should be sweet. So if bitterness rises up, uh, ugliness rises up, or maybe you're, you're dealing with a, a, a sickness or a relationship that's gone bad or a heartache, whatever is bitter, take the cross of Jesus Christ, the tree, and throw it and say, I throw the cross, I throw the blood at that crisis. That rebellious child, I declare Jesus. My finances seem cursed and bitter. I declare Jesus my business, my marriage, my child, whatever it is, I throw the cross. And how many of you know the cross will make bitter water sweet in your life? Mm. I said throw the cross at it with the power of your words and declare Jesus. I tell you, he's a restorer of life. How many of you know he's a miracle worker? This, this, this seems too far. My child seemed like a two. I'm not, I don't even know if God can. Nothing can withstand, withstand the, the power of the cross and the blood. I throw the cross right at my son, my daughter, my children, my marriage, my husband, my wife. The cross of Christ. It feels so bitter right now. It feels hopeless. But when you throw Jesus, he turns all that bitterness into sweetness. I said, praise God forevermore. You know, it's interesting in John, in John chapter 2, Jesus was, and his disciple and Jesus' mother Mary were invited to a wedding of, their, of, of, of one of their good friends. And they went to this wedding and, and uh, had the ceremony and they're having the reception and and. They, they served up the wine, but they ran out of wine real quickly, real fast. And, and remember Mary, Jesus' mama, thank God for mamas, but they, 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 she, she asked Jesus, say, Jesus, you know what, I'm going to ask you, we're out of wine. This is a problem. This is an embarrassment for the family and, and, and this and that. And said, we're, we're all out of wine. And Jesus was like, mama, please, it's not, it's not my time yet. Not yet, all right? How many of you know mama got a persuasive way of, of, of pulling things out? <laughs> you mamas. Jesus, the son of God, and his mama changed his mind. <laughs> mamas. Wow. Some kind of power over all of us, right? And so even Jesus said, fine, mama. You guys got any water pots around here? Bring me about six of them, huge, and, and, and put water. And, and so then, then Jesus' mama said, whatever he said, just do it. It doesn't make sense. 
What good is getting water pots and filling with water every day? Mama said, just do what he says, all right? They brought the water pots. They filled them to the brim. And Jesus said, all right, take it to the, to the master of ceremonies. And, and the water turned to wine, and he, he drew it out. And he took it, and he said, wow, this is incredible. Normally, at a, at a, at a celebration, you serve the best wine first. And then you, then after everybody's a little, mm, then you give the, you, you give the, 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 you know, lower quality wine. Nobody knows it. But you guys, but the master of the sentence said, man, you guys, this is crazy. You guys have saved the best wine for last. And a sweet wine. And so notice that miracle happened at a wedding ceremony. What is Jesus? One of the things I believe Jesus is telling us is, listen, I, listen, if you will trust Jesus and drink the sweet wine of God's love and God's grace, you can have a sweet wine of love and romance in your marriage throughout the years. Because the world way says, man, we've been married a long time. Enough of this. I need something fresh. I need something new. But did you know if you trust and drink the wine of God's love and, and trust God in your marriage that you can have sweet love and romance flowing in your entire marriage? Cindy and I have been married for a long time. Let's go with that. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. A long time. And and, and, and I got to tell you, we, we, still love, we still love each other. Not only that, we like each other a lot. Because some people, I don't know, yeah, I love you, honey, but, yeah, but do you like me? Hmm. No. And somebody said, I'm so glad I don't work. I, I'm so glad I got a job because I can't hang with my spouse all day. We actually hang with each other most all the day because we work together, we live together, we do life together. We love it. Cindy chased me around the house all the time. <laughs> I'm good with it. But I think now, you know, our, our, our love, it, it's just sweeter every year. Somebody said, Pastor Fred, I, I need real wine for my, my marriage right now. I, I need some real stuff to try to dull something. No. How many of you know you trust Jesus? You throw the cross at it. Come on, the power of the blood, and Jesus will turn that bitterness into sweetness. In your marriage, in your life, come on, in your relationships, whatever the problem is, throw the cross at it. Mama, right? You too, dads. Trust in the blood to transform your life from, from water to a sweet wine, so to speak, in your marriage and in every area of your life. So throw the cross, and you see illustrations of, of wood all the time in the Bible, the Old Testament of the cross. One time there was a, there was a, uh, uh, the prophets of God, they were running out of room, and the prophet of God said to Elisha, hey, this room is too small. We need to build another, a bigger, a bigger place. And the prophet said, go down the Jordan River and start cutting down trees. We're going to build a bigger house. And so one of the prophets had got a, his axe, and he was cutting down the tree, and the axe had fell off and went into the Jordan River, gone. He says, oh, bother, it was borrowed. How I many you know that's why I don't borrow stuff, and please don't ask me to borrow, to borrow anything from me because something bad happens and you, you, you feel bad, right? He said, the axe head was, was borrowed. And what did the prophet say? He said, where to fall? He said, right there in the Jordan. So the prophet went and got a stick. Remember, anytime you see wood or a stick or a tree, it represents the power of the cross. Prophetic. He got a stick. And he, threw, and he threw it right where it fell. And that iron axe head came out from the bottom, the mucky mud, and started hovering right on top of the water. And the man of, and, and so the prophet was standing there looking at it like, and the man of God was like, do I got to do everything? Pick it up. Go get it. <laughs> Take it. The power of the cross. And so we know that that, that stick represents Jesus. Did you know Jesus is interesting? Because that guy had a debt he couldn't pay. He couldn't pay that. He lost it. How many of you know if you'll throw the cross at every debt financial, your finances situation, that God will start doing miracles in your finances as well. Amen. Because he canceled that debt through the cross. And so he'll do. So you see the cross everywhere. So wherever you have trouble, mama, moms and dads, throw the cross at it. Declare Jesus and the blood 
and the work of redemption. And so, so, and cast every burden on the Lord. Mom. 1 Peter 5, 7, very powerful. Many of you know it. Casting what? The whole of your care. Everything. All your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, and many times there's a lot of things. Once, what? And for all upon him, who? Jesus. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Did you know that in Christ, mom, and many times you carry stuff, you carry burdens, this and that. Did you know you can take that burden and you can cast it upon Jesus and he can take that and, come on, turn everything for your good. Right? You got to, the, the problem is casting it, letting it go. We were just, as we mentioned, we were, were visiting with uh, some pastor friends this past week. And uh, we were right there on a lake. We were sitting down enjoying enjoying the lake, and uh, a, couple of, a couple of pastors said, hey, let, let, let's, let's fish. And so they grabbed a couple of fishing poles and, and, and put, put a, a worm on it, and they went out a little ways on the dock, and they, they, threw, they threw the pole in the water, and they had a little bobber on it, and they put the, the fishing rod on the deck of the, right there with the, uh, and, and, and I said, hey, I said, hey, you, you better not just leave that there because what if a fish grabs it? Oh, no, no, there's only small blue gale in here right on the dock. And I'm just going to sit here, and if I see my, my pole move, I'll just go get it. I said, all right, fine. Sure enough, we sat down chatting away, and then boom, that, 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 that pole, that bop, poof, went down. Like, Whoa, and sure enough, that pole just took off. Rod, reel, everything. <laughs> I said, that's some kind of big blue gale right there. I don't know. That never happened. He said, well, it's happening right now. She's that pole. It's gone. But it reminded me, when I, when I saw that, it reminded me, it reminded me you know what, we're, we're, uh, of a fisherman who cast, you know, his cast, his bait, his line in, in the water, and he cast it in there, and, and, but, but a fisherman, and then he'll reel it back in. And how many of you know God said, when we cast our cares upon the Lord, Get rid of the rod, the reel, everything. Let it go. Just let the fish take it. Let the care. Come on. So there's no way you can reel it back in, right? Just let it go. Gone. He said, you think we can save it? No chance. Maybe I can grab a drag, the, you know, grab a hook and drag us. Forget it. It's gone. And that's the way you want your cares to God. Not cast it upon him and then, oh, by the way, I, I want to take it back. No, and I understand we're all tempted with that. But you say, no, 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 Lord. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to reel that back in. I, I leave it upon you because I know you can take care of my children. You can take care of my marriage, my future, my, or anything that concerns me. I cast it upon Jesus because he can handle it. You and I know. We're not made for it. If I let anxiety get to me, how many of you know I'm spending a lot of time in the bathroom? It ain't pretty. I'm just, I'm just right? My stomach is, some of you the same way. But no, let it go. Throw the cross at it and cast every care upon Jesus. Come on. How many, of you, how many can say he's brought you out plenty of times? He can bring. So, Mama, number one, we're talking about three cures from God for anxiety, bitterness, and, and throw the cross at it and cast every burden on Jesus. Now, secondly, secondly, ask God for wisdom. I know that's simple, but did you know the Bible says you have not because you ask not? Many times we just fail to ask. We fail to approach him in faith. It's not that complicated. Ask God for wisdom. Wisdom has to do with the future. Lord, what, what's your plan? How are we going to handle this? And we have a scripture in, in James chapter 1, verse 5, very familiar scripture. Because if any of you lacks wisdom, somebody said, well, that's me today. I need his wisdom. I need to know which path to take, how to handle stuff. Let him ask of God. Wow. Wow. You mean to tell me if I just ask the Father in Jesus' name, I need wisdom, how to deal with this situation, that God will hear me and answer? Yes. He gives to all what? Liberally, freely. And notice, without reproach or finding fault. Because if you're in Christ today, there's no fault in you. There's no reproach in you if you're in Christ. Yeah, but I've got issues. I got problems. We all do. But the blood of Jesus, come on, covers all that. You can approach God with boldness and I need your help. 
despite all my shortcomings and failures. No, no, no fault. God has no fault finding in God. Notice that he said, and you ask. And, and it what? There's a good possibility if God's in a good mood, he might give it to you. No. He will. It will be given to you. Because God knows your future better than you know the past. Right? And as we said in the word of the Lord at the beginning of this year, that God's going ahead of you into every month of this year. And he's working out every crooked path and making it, filling in potholes. He's working. He's moving. He knows what's throughout this whole year. And he's working it all. And now he's come back and said, I've cleared the way for you. All is well. And so despite things that are going on, say, Lord, we ask for your wisdom concerning my child. I know if you're raising teenagers, they can be challenging. But Lord, I ask for your wisdom, for your help in all these things. And the Bible says he will give it to you. What an advantage we have in Christ. Praise the Lord to have the wisdom of God. I promise you God is not stressed out. I promise you God does not do drama. I know sometimes our family, so the big fallout, the drama everywhere. But how many of you know God is God will not join your drama party? No. He's a perfect peace. He doesn't do stress and drama. He's not moved by anything that's happened in your life. Like, wow, I never saw this before. What, Lord, how are we going to handle this one? Whew, that was crazy. No. Come on. He, he, no, he should just, Lord, we trust you. We need to ask for your wisdom. Ask for your help. Father, in Jesus' name, remain calm and let God, come on, work things out for your, for his glory and for your good. Amen. So ask God for wisdom. And so then the Third one, the first one, remember, throw the cross at it and every burden lay on Jesus. Ask God for wisdom. And then thirdly, and finally, I'm, I'm going to wrap up with this one. Keep a joyful countenance, mamas, dads, all of us. Keep a joyful countenance. Did you know that you decide what your countenance will be? I refuse to let circumstances, I refuse to let other people de determine how my day's going. Because some people, whether it's family member or co-worker, they say something sideways and they get your back up and then it ruins your whole day. How dare we let someone else have power over us? I refuse it. Uh-uh. I know it's challenging sometimes, but no. Because I've got somebody greater back in me and in me. Greater is he that's in me than everyone else in the world, including the enemy. If we have the greater one, everyone out there is lesser. So regardless of that, we can keep a joyful countenance. Notice it says in Proverbs uh, Proverbs 15, verse uh, 23. A man has what? Joy. By what? By everyone else, how they respond? No. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. Right? And a word spoken in due season, how good it is. Wow. So you mean to tell me that my joy and having a joyful account is up to me? Yes. How are you going to answer the door when things show up in our life? We all know that um, if there's a knock at your door and you, you open the door, you decide if it's friend or foe, foe whether you're going to let him in or not. Right? Come on in, somebody's friend, and oh, man, you know you're going to get good news. You know you're going to encourage one another. Come on in, sit down in fellowship, and they speak in a good word, a good word in due season, how good it is, right? But if you see someone you don't, it's, it's not good, or, or a thought that comes in your mind that's betraying you, am I going to meditate upon that and, and, and take that thought and, and knock on the door where doubt and discouragement, negativity, and say, Come on in, you know, and they say, hey, I don't want to, I'm just going to, I just want to hang out for a little while. Maybe we'll have lunch together and then I'll be on my way. And, and, but by the time they sit down and all that negativity, they, they start unpacking all their cousins and all the garbage and they're hanging out for a week. No, we say no. The, 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 the answer of our tongue is from the Lord, right? The, the, the joy. And Lord, I choose to rejoice. I choose, choose to trust you. And that's, that's our whole countenance. In God. And a word spoken in due season, how good it is. 
how sweet it is. We know how dejecting sometimes when we hear a bad report, whether it's from the doctor or whether it's from just somebody speaking a negative word or gossip. We know how we can hear a negative word and it can affect us. It affects us in a discouraging way. Am I right? It tries to get on us and, and, and something negative. And so how much more an encouraging word, a word from God, can turn everything around and lift you up? Say, so, well, it's just words. Yes, but they're powerful words that, that encourage our hearts. And so we're going to stay away from all that negativity and keep it out of our, our, our mind. You know, I, I shared not long ago that your mind is like, a, is like a freeway, like Interstate 80 out here. Stuff coming and going all the time, especially you ladies. <laughs> you mamas. Now, that's a proven fact. I'm not just picking on mamas. Mamas got a, some kind of brain capacity that's incredible. Supernova Highway, and us guys, we got a footbridge, you know, coming in, you know, it's like. But their mind, your minds are going and trafficking stuff coming in, just like the freeway. You got an entrance, an on-ramp, and an exit. Stuff is on-ramp coming into your mind and, and, and then exits. And so we want to make sure we got good stuff on the highways of our mind and of our life. And when something negative or evil enters in and it's in the fast lane, we say, uh-uh, next exit out. I throw the cross at you, the blood, the power of the word. Out, next exit, that negativity, out, gone. Right? You decide. You have the power of choice to choose. And you can have a life because, as I said, I, 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 I'm not the best at it, but I, I've learned over the years I want a countenance of joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Right? So if my jo joy is low, my strength is low. And if my strength is low, my oil is low, right? The oil of the Holy Spirit. And all that's not working for me good. So I'm going to make sure I have the oil of gladness and the joy of the Lord on my life. I had a, I had a friend years ago, and uh, uh, he, uh, he went to get in his dad's car. And he said, hey, let's go down to the store and get a soda pop or something. We we're just old enough just to start driving. Well, he didn't realize that his dad was working on the motor, and he took off, like, the oil filter. He was changing the oil, and he drained the oil, and he took off all, 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 the, all this stuff. And, and, but he didn't know, so we get in, and it starts the car up, and there was just enough to get the car going. Starts up, all is well. <laughs> Put it in gear. We got that three block, everything froze up. What the, what's going on? Then we find out oil everywhere. It's, oh, Bob, we're in trouble. But how many of you understand in the same way the oil of gladness of joy is the oil of the Holy Spirit that runs everything smooth? And so if you're, if you're running dry, you're going to seize up in life. It's going to lock you up. No, like government cheese, you know, lock you up. <laughs> Mama, please, no more of that back in the day. But no oil. So you got to say, you know, regardless, I'm going to have the oil of joy, the oil of gladness in my life, and I'm going to rejoice and I refuse to let negativity dominate my life. And if you keep rejoicing, that oil keeps pumping, come on, that car will run smooth. And your life, it'll smooth out all those things in your life. Right? So the joy, the countenance of joy, we cannot give up. We cannot sacrifice. But we choose by the words of our mouth and to receive the Lord. How many of you know we got every reason to rejoice? We got every reason to be glad in the Lord. I know we got stuff, but we got every reason to rejoice and have that joyful countenance. Do you receive the word of God today, church? Praise the Lord. Father, thank you so much for your precious, holy, written word today. And Father, as we've looked at your word, I pray that your word would go down deep in the heart and the soul and the body of every person here today and those of you watching. Father, may we live a life of victory. May we, have, we live a life that we're shining for you. Thank you for helping us in all these areas. And help us to shine for you that our, our neighbors, our co-workers, those out there in life, they need Jesus desperately as well. Help us to shine, Father, with a countenance of joy that they'll say, what's different about you? You should be sad, but you have joy instead. And so, Father, may the oil of gladness come upon every one of us and all these beautiful things through Jesus, our Lord. 
And so I thank you for that. I speak over your lives today. I speak the cross over your lives. I speak the cross over your children, your grandchildren. I speak the blood of Jesus over you and your marriages in Jesus' name and over all that you set your hand to do. I speak the blood of Jesus and the stripes over your body for healing to flow into your body. The blood of Jesus over your finances. I throw in a stick, the cross, and that your finances would be blessed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that you mend, you restore, you renew, you revive a freshness upon everyone today. Now with your heads bowed and your eyes closed here in the house, please don't leave without acknowledging Jesus as the Lord of your life. Those of you watching as well, you say, Pastor Fred, I need Jesus. My life is seized up. I've got nothing. You need a touch from him. You need a touch from God. Jesus bore every curse, every sin, every burden on the tree. That whoever calls upon him, the scripture says, they'll be saved. Their sins will be forgiven. They'll live the abundant life. Not the life of the world, the abundant life. To all who trust in him. So if you feel pressing in your heart. You feel like maybe your heart beats pumping a little faster. That's the Holy Spirit. That's God saying, I love you. I sent Jesus. Won't you call upon him? Maybe you're here in the house and you say, Pastor Fred, I, I just need a fresh start. I need a new beginning in my walk with God. I want to rededicate my heart and my life. I'm tired of doing things my own way. I want a fresh start with God. And I want to bear the fruit. I want to be a light and a testimony. If that's you and your head's bowed and you say, Pastor Fred, I need Jesus, lift up your hand right now. Or I need a fresh start in the Lord. Lift up your hand in, in the house as I look around the church today. I need Jesus or I need a fresh start from the Lord today as I'm looking here to my, to my right and coming across. Anyone like that at all? I want a fresh start. I want a new beginning. Thank you. Those of you watching as well, you pray this simple prayer with me as those here in the house. Say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending Jesus. I make him the Lord of my life. For a fresh start and a new beginning. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and restoring me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do you receive that today, church? I know you do. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, Thank you so much for coming today. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you all. Thank you for allowing Cindy and I to be your pastors. We don't take it lightly. We, can, we count it a joy to be able to minister the word of God to you each and every week. All right. Are you ready for the blessing today? Lift up your hands. I'm going to speak this blessing over every single one of you, those of you watching his way as well. As your pastor, may the Lord bless, protect, and prosper you and your loved ones throughout this week. According to Psalm 91, that you dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. And may God give his angels charge concerning you that no evil, plague, disaster, or calamity comes near your dwelling. And may God place you at the right place at the right time with the right people. And may the sweetness of his love and his grace be a part of every area of your life. And finally, may his shalom peace and rest be your constant companion throughout this week. In Jesus' name, Say amen if you receive that. All right, God bless you all. We love you. You are dismissed.